Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about coupled reactions. Coupled reactions are really important in biology, but it's, it's hard to find a good definition for what a coupled reaction is. And so whenever I'm failed for a definition, I go to an analogy. And so let's talk about this, which is a water wheel or a water mill. Basically what happens is as the water flows down, it's going to power this giant wheel. And inside here, that wheel is going to be attached to a stone, and it's going to be used to grind grain into something like flour. A windmill works the same way. And so basically what we're doing is we're coupling the power of that flowing river with the power of this grinding of the uh, mill. And so in biology, we don't use water. We use chemicals. And so the big chemical reaction that you should be familiar with is the breakdown of ATP. So this is adenosine triphosphate. It's triphosphate because you have three phosphate groups here on the end. And so basically it has a delta G of negative 7.3 kilocals per mole. That means that it releases energy when this third phosphate is broken off. And so if we look at what that looks like, basically this phosphate comes off and we can use that to power other reactions. What happens next? Well, we have to reattach that phosphate. And so it's kind of like a rechargeable battery. In fact, this is the rechargeable battery inside life. And so we constantly are going from adenosine triphosphate or ATP. We're releasing that phosphate to make ADP and then we're storing it again over and over and over again. And, and we do this constantly all day and you go through about a body's worth of weight in ATP every day, which is a huge amount. And so you're probably familiar with coupled reactions, but maybe not the term. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the sun to the thumb. In other words, I'm going to show you how energy is transferred from the thumb, uh, from the sun to your thumb or the raising of your thumb and all the coupled reactions that we see within that. And so we have to start, of course, with plants. When we're talking about photosynthesis, the first part of photosynthesis is the light reaction. Right here we're inside the thylakoid membrane. And so as this electron moves through here, we're using the energy of that flowing electron to pump protons to the inside. So we're coupling the reaction or the, that movement of the electron with the movement of the protons. So that's a coupled reaction. Let me find another one. Right here we're moving this electron here and we're eventually making NADPH. So that's a coupled reaction. Or right here we're pumping those protons back through that thylakoid membrane and we're making ATP out of it. And so that's a coupled reaction. We'd have another coupled reaction here. So we have a number of coupled reactions, and we're still just in the light reaction. If we look in the Calvin cycle, you can see right here, basically we're breaking ATP down into ADP, and we're using that to couple this reaction, which is eventually going to make G3P, after we have coupled another reaction, breaking down NADPH into NADP+. And even if you look back here, as we make RUBP, we're doing another coupled reaction. In this case, we're taking the energy that we'd stored in the light reaction, and we're actually releasing that to make RUBP. So a bunch of coupled reactions, but we're not to the thumb yet. Because in the thumb, what we've got to do is we've got to take sugar and break it down. That's what life does. And so basically, we're talking now about cellular respiration. So where's a coupled reaction here? As we break glucose down into pyruvate through the process of glycolysis, we're coupling that reaction with this other endergonic reaction where we're storing that energy in NADPH, or NADH, excuse me. Same thing here. As we break down and make acetyl COA, we make more NADH. And we're doing the same thing in the Krebs cycle. Now, if we look at the oxidative phosphorylation, we're coupling the flow of these electrons with the pumping of the protons. And we're coupling that reaction as the protons flow back in with ATP synthase. And so what are you doing in a coupled reaction? You're releasing energy in one reaction or one process and then storing it in another. But let's keep going. We're not to the thumb yet. In order to get your thumb to rise, you have to actually use a nerve. And to do that, we're using another coupled reaction. This is the sodium-potassium pump in your nerves, and we're using that to establish a gradient. Or even if we get to the muscle itself, as we break down that ATP into ADP, it's moving that myosin along the actin. And that's actually what makes your muscle uh, move and make your thumb move up. And so what are coupled reactions coupling the exergonic with the endergonic, the ender energy releasing with the energy consuming reactions? But sometimes that occurs within a equation itself. And so now we get to something that always confuses students, and these are called the redox reactions. And so redox reactions are basically, in this case, we're looking at electrons and where the electrons flow. And so this right here is sugar with oxygen makes carbon dioxide water and then it's going to make ATP and so this is cellular respiration and so we call this a redox reaction because the electrons and the energy of those electrons is being transferred from the sugar 
to the oxygen to make carbon dioxide. And the oxygen is gaining those electrons, and as it's gaining those electrons, it's eventually becoming uh, water. So we lose the electrons here, we gain the electrons here. So you can see it's like a coupled reaction within a reaction. So we're losing electrons of the food, and we're gaining the electrons of the oxygen. And when I say losing and gaining, what I mean is we are physically transferring those electrons from one chemical to another. And they're high energy electrons in our food, and then as they fall down to low energy uh, bonded with oxygen, we release a lot of that energy, in this case in the form of ATP. But this doesn't have to be sugar up here. This could be, for example, methane gas, what you burn in a Bunsen burner. And so as we lose those electrons in there, we get energy in the form of heat. Or this could be propane or gasoline or anything like that is a redox reaction, losing electrons and gaining electrons. Now that's sometimes confusing because we've got oxidation, reduction, and so here's a quick way to remember that. The way I remember it is oil rig. And this is what an oil rig looks like. And if you think about it, the burning of oil is a redox reaction. But why do I even talk about oil rig? Well, if you remember O-I-L-R-I-G, that, that will remind you that oxidation is the losing of electrons in cellular respiration. That would be from our sugar. And reduction is gaining. And that, in this case, would be the gaining of electrons by oxygen. And so that's just a coupling within a reaction. And so hopefully that makes sense, what coupled reactions are. You just have to have a little bit of understanding of uh, thermodynamics, exergonic and endergonic reactions. And I hope that's helpful.